Okay, one correct, the only thing I can try and match Felicity with, and I can't, is my greatest claim to fame is not these submersibles, but I killed James Bond. I mean, that's the nearest thing I've got to heroic. <laughs> if you look at For Your Eyes Only, I'm a bad guy. I was told to kill Bond, I had a real submarine. I wasn't really supposed to kill him, but they told me to make it look good. And I said, well, if I give it my best, which they asked, I will kill him. They said, no, you won't. I said, yes, I will. I said, no, you won't. I said, yes, I will. I did. Smashed his submarine, put the whole thing, the whole shooting thing back two weeks. But at least I killed him. <laughs> Look, um, I'm going to gallop through this because there's a few pieces of video that I do want to show. But when it comes to exploration, um, Please tell the next generation, please tell your kids that most of this planet they're on is not explored. Please. The next generation are growing up thinking their parents, the generation before, who had this great age of exploration, they're inheriting a world which is known, trodden over. It just is not true. This is an ocean planet. Earth is a really stupid name for this planet. 94% of life on Earth is aquatic. We're a tiny minority on the small, small habitat. The main habitat is actually the oceans. I've tried to represent it here. Um, one of the things that we need to do better that we're trying to do is to understand that the oceans are a three-dimensional place, not a two-dimensional place. The reason I say that is that we started mastery in airspace with ballooning. Um, then we transitioned from ballooning which is lighter than air machines to fix wing aircraft using dynamic forces of lift. Um, we currently explore um, the oceans with underwater balloons. We arrive on a big mothership, we drop a heavy submersible, heavier than water instead of lighter than air. It's the exact mirror image of a balloon. And we parachute down to the bottom, wiggle a bit, and then come back up again. Um, we've been trying to build We've actually succeeded. I can't tell a lie. We've succeeded. We've been building the world's first underwater aircraft. And these were invented by the Wright brothers, of course, 100 years ago. Uh, human beings are not as creative as we think. We leave big imagination holes behind us. One of those was understanding that the oceans are a three-dimensional place and not to be content parachuting down in deep submersibles, landing on the bottom going, oh, this is really neat dropping weights and coming straight back up again. So, um, uh, National Geographic actually did the first little uh, film. We launched um, Deep Flight One in 1996. I'm gonna gallop through this. Uh, by the way, if you think they're original ideas, perhaps there's no such thing. It seems to me Leonardo da Vinci invented everything, um, but the rest of us were just stuck with actually turning it into reality, but that's just fine. So. Um, if you think that we invented underwater flight, trust me, I've got a lot of people saying, no, 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 we did, we did. And a couple of friends have given me Tentan, which was 1930s, and if you look at um, his idea, he was flying. Anyway, after Deep Flight 1, the next thing we felt we needed, and it turns out we're just following the footsteps of aviation, was a two-seat trainer. This was launched in 2003. Um, the next thing they did with aviation was, wow, this is so cool, we can go for records. And, um, you know, this has ties to Chicago. Stephen Fawcett, do you know that name? Okay. Um, Steve had flown around the world in a balloon. He'd flown around the world on a single tank of gas in a jet aircraft. He had set many records with um, uh, sailing. And he and I had been talking for a number of years. And his big, big, I don't know if it was his final fling, but his big thing that we kept secret. So when all of this was going on, this was just kind of hidden. But, but Steve and I worked on getting him to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. And we built this machine you see there. In the, now it's in the virgin um, colors. But this was four weeks away from being launched when Steve was last. And that was 2009, I think, in September. He flew a light airplane into the side of a mountain in Nevada. Um, you know, uh, just life has funny twists and turns. And um, 
I think it's true to say that had Steve lived, he certainly within six months would have taken that machine to the bottom of the ocean. Um, we thought he had a 90% chance of coming back. Yeah, maybe, maybe a five, there was certainly a chance that there would be a big nasty bang, but it'd be a great way to go, you wouldn't know anything. Um, that was the dangerous machine. But after that, my wife and I decided that we will build a craft for ourselves. Um, I did think that if we sold the dog and everything else, we could perhaps afford to build one that would go to the bottom of the planet. This was before the race was thought to be about. And it's what I would have been saying I wanted to do for the last 20 years. But the problem is I'm an engineer, not perhaps an explorer. <laughs> and as soon as the numbers worked on the back of the napkin, napkin, I was kind of done. It's hard for people to understand. Perhaps a real explorer has to go. Um, I'm an engineer. As soon as the numbers worked out, we did the design and the math worked out, we can go. You know, what's the problem? So I then looked at what the next real big problem was and moved on from trying to go deep. And nobody else has moved on, so we're out alone. And where that moved on was, look, if we, if all we're trying to do is get to the bottom of the ocean, parachute in and drop in, we're treating the ocean as a two-dimensional place, but it's a three-dimensional space. The big animals are moving in the twilight zone. Uh, whales, big sharks hunting. I want to move with them because while we're just parachuting through, we saw one dimension. How do we get to three? How do we move in this space? And the answer, of course, is you have to go fly. So um, I started building this machine. It's circled there in red. You, you'll see a better view. Into our shop walked Tom Perkins. Tom is the godfather of Silicon Valley. He built that magnificent sailboat. Um, he said he was in our shop for 35 minutes. I think it only took him 20 minutes. I mean, if anybody can walk into a scruffy workshop and figure out this is real and not BS, it's Tom Perkins. So I had 25 minutes, Tom was saying, can you have contracts on my desk tomorrow by 10? And what he wanted was what I was building. We had this conversation, which was, I want that. I said, well, that's great. Um, I'll build you another one. That's mine. No, no, no. I want that one. <laughs> Tom was in a hurry. So I said, okay, but we build two, and the second one is not going to be one whit less than the one we're building for you. Um, that's Tom in his. So I'm going to gallop through this. I'm not going to tell a story about this, but, but with Tom Sub, we got it in the Rocca Partita. It's a fabulous story. It just isn't time, but it was, it's a terrifying rock out in um, the Pacific off of Mexico. Um, we were there because I shot my mouth off again. Um, Tom was asking where we can take this and have a great adventure. And I said, I know. I was out in the Rock of Partida with the National Geographic with Deep Flight One years ago. And he said, well, what happened? I said, it was too scary. I refused to get in. He, he looked at his captain and said, when can you be there? He said, we'll be there by two days in the morning. And I went, no, we won't. We, he can't anchor that ship. I woke up two days later, horrified to find the Maltese Falcon, there it is, um, anchored about a mile away from this terrifying rock with this huge swell going through. Um, I, I know man submersibles. You put a conventional man submersible in the water there, the current takes it away, and you're in a lot of trouble. So I'm on the deck early in the morning, leaning on Tom's falcon, thinking, how do I say no to Tom Perkins? He's not a guy you can say no to. And then I realized he was standing right by there. He looked me in the eyes, saw right through me, and said, Graham, you built this to do that, pointing at the rock, didn't you? And I said, yes. He said, well, let's do it. Anyway, huge success, wonderful dive. But I, I just have to move on. There's Tom's on the wreck of the Rome. Um, and uh, about a year ago, we decided that things were going too slow and we'd have to take ours and really see, prove what we could do with underwater flight. We took it to um, the Gulf of Aqaba. There's my son. We put a bunch of scientists in the back and we flew from the Saudi border. It's the first time it's been done, by the way. No stinking mothership. We flew from the Saudi border um, to the Israeli border 
And uh, go to the next slide, please. OK, can you run this video? You have to gallop through this. Um, I want to show you this. This is not particularly spectacular. But look at that back cockpit. The face you see in there is the future. Just watch that back cockpit. There's my ugly mug in the front. But look who's in the back. That is the future, ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing it right there. That's my daughter. She's 11. <laughs> she, OK, can you cut that video? And go to the next slide. She is not the hairy bearded National Geographic explorer you expected. That's the future. That's the future. Seriously. Forget the Cousteaus. Forget me. Forget the old guys. Your kids are going to get access to this planet that Cameron just went down to the bottom of. And I've got two kids whose only question isn't can I go, it's can I drive it, Dad? <laughs> um, this is, I'm going to show you a video because it's fun. This was, we had it in Guadalupe with Virgin with um, uh, Sir Richard Branson. Can you run this video, please? I apologize for the music. We pirated it. But if, if you know the movie, it's hilarious. We just had to do it. Anyway, in the back there is Sir Richard Branson. Supposed to be training him, but Richard, that morning, I'm telling tales out of school here, so what stays in Chicago, what said in Chicago stays in Chicago, okay? Um, so a friend of mine is in a boat in the distance, Amos Nakam, he says he has a great white underneath of the shark cage. So I said to Richard, look, you don't really feel like learning to fly. Let me just take you out there. Here we are, we arrived. Let's see if there's a great white there. And so off the back of that boat, there's a, there is a dive cage down, um, off there. And we dive down. You'll see that in a second. Um, I circle around the cage as if we're the great white shark. And sure enough, in the cage, there are two divers with their eyes as big as saucers. And they're going, pointing down underneath. So Rich is like, come on, let's go find it. So we circle down. and. It's really hard to see, I'm afraid, but right there, we didn't see it at this point. Oh, you can't see it in this. Well, there she is. Is a massive great white, as big as we are, but she's lying in ambush. Um. <laughs> and you see the sub start shaking? It's smarter than we were. We're laughing in the back, because we, we're two Englishmen, nose to nose with the great white. She's right here. She's not as long. We're 22 feet long. She was about 16 feet long, but she's massive around. And uh, oh, I, I've just got to move on from here. Um, <laughs> this is Tom Perkins. The other goal we had was to get the Super Falcon with, um, with whales, barrel rolls with the whales. That was coined by one of our earlier volunteers. Tom has just done that. I don't have the video, but about two one week ago in Tonga. Um, just extraordinary. And uh, BBC or Discovery should have been there, but they keep missing this stuff. Um, there again is, um, now wait a minute, uh, I cut off a video. But we're running out of time. Here is my daughter again. That's my favorite photograph. Again, that's the future. But here's where we're going with this. We've done everything. We've, we've you know, set, we've done setting records. We've flown cross country. Um, we've been inverted. We've, the record for inverted flight, which is a hell of a lot of fun, I gotta tell you now, stands at one minute, 23 seconds. Um, and we had a session with Google and at IDO. Where do we take this? And the, both of those, the 20 really bright guys, all said the same thing. You've got to build a passenger craft and take you down. That's where we're going. So um, we're trying to do that. We've got a whale song. Check the website out. There's only about three places left. But we're going to go down, and look, we're going to dive in company of, of the humpbacks, not visually in contact with them, but we're going to listen to their whale songs. Um, so look to the future. We're going to be flying underwater. I promise you, it's, it's just extraordinary. It, and it's not as hairy as skiing across. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>